Shalom. Our Torah portion this week is Chaye Sarah. Sadly, it marks the passing of our first matriarch, Sarah, a remarkable woman who, in a patriarchal society, a society in which men dominated the affairs of the community, Sarah managed to leave her mark, not only on her own generation, but every generation to come. Chaye Sarah can be translated as the life of Sarah. However, the details of her life in this particular sedra are hard to find. Two other narratives predominate. Abraham's acquisition of the cave of Machpelah for a family burial site and the mission to find a suitable mate uh, for uh, Isaac. These are the two main stories. Yet, a careful examination of the opening line from this parasha may reveal more about Sarah's life than a casual reading might. Let's take a look at what it says. Behiyu chaye sara meir shana ve esrim shana ve sheva shanim shne chaye sara. Sarah's lifetime was 100 years and 20 years and 7 years, the years of Sarah's life. The grammatical structure of this sentence is as peculiar in Hebrew as it is in English. Rashi asks, why was the word shana, that is the word year, written after each digit of her age at the time of her death? That is 100, 100 years, 20 years, and 7 years. Why not just say 127 years and be done with it? Rashi answers that this is to teach us that when she was 100 years old, she was like a person of 20 years old with respect to sin. Just as one who is 20, uh, 20 years old is considered without sin, after all they haven't lived long enough to commit many sins, so too Sarah, at a hundred, was, uh, was without sin. And when she was 20 years old, she was like a seven-year-old girl with, with regard to her physical beauty. Her physical beauty uh, never diminished throughout her life. Now, Rashi goes on to say, the years of Sarah's life were all equal in goodness, uh, Latova. It's that last phrase uh, that captures my imagination. Uh, Sarah's life was certainly eventful, but not always what we would call good or, or positive. Her life was uprooted when her husband, who was already an established, mature man, heeds God's command to, to set off on a journey to an undisclosed location. Can you imagine how difficult that was? She was a woman of stature, um, a woman of, uh, of a fairly high level of affluence, just to pick up her life and to follow her husband to a place that they didn't even know where they were going to. That could not have been easy. And we're also told that for many years, Sarah was barren, failing to provide a male heir to carry on Abraham's line. Now, in a patriarchal society, this was considered a great failure of, of a wife. She also suffered along with her extended family during times of famine. There were at least two occasions in which she had to, again, pick herself up with her family and leave uh, her home in search of food. It was not always an easy life. And there's even speculation that her death 
was brought on when she was informed incorrectly, as it turned out, that Abraham had actually sacrificed Isaac on Mount Moriah. During her 127 years of life, Sarah experienced many happy and positive events, but as we can clearly see, she also experienced troubled and turbulent times and events as well. Yet raw, she says, all of Sarah's years were equal for goodness. Could it be that Sarah had achieved a sense of equanimity in her life because of her faith in God and because she found meaning in her life because she saw her life in the larger context of God's un unfolding plan, not only for herself and her family, not only for the Jewish people, but for all of humanity. Perhaps the lesson of Sarah's life is that when our lives are seen in the context of service to God and our fellow beings, our lives are infused with purpose and that purpose helps us to find goodness in every phase of our lives. It helps us to turn every event, no matter positive or maybe not so positive, into something good. Well, I hope that you will read this week's Torah portion and come to your own conclusion. Shabbat Shalom.